don't think we'll be riding the bike today. And when weather like this, the trip to Sky seems a distant memory. But what did I learn from that? Well, stick around and find out. Hi everyone, Gordon from Up North Bike here. I'm going to tell you what I learned from my first solo trip on my motorbike. It seems such a long time ago, to be honest. It's only a few months, but the lights are drawn in now and it's coming into winter. Um, most people putting the bikes away, but this thing's going to get me to work regularly. So there's a few points. So let's start with the big one riding with panniers. So I've never done it before. And um, what I would highly recommend is that you stick them on your bike and you practice. The bike's a lot wider at the back than you used to. So when you're nipping in and out of traffic or when you're maneuvering the bike, you've just got to remember there's a bit more width at the back end. As well as that, the bike handles slightly different with the panniers. So I think if I was doing this again, I would load them up with what I was going to carry, get the weight right, and then just practice riding around, and especially slow maneuvering and pushing the bike around in car parks, things like that. It does change the balance of the bike. Uh, not an awful lot, but enough where it's probably worth practicing. I did find at uh, sort of very low speeds and higher speeds, you could tell the panniers were there in the way the bike handled. Setting up your suspension. So because you're carrying more weight on the back, the chances are you will need to add preload onto the back of the bike. I tightened mine up a bit. Um, the way I tested it was I got someone to hold the bike and I uh, hold it upright and I just measured the sag from normal to with the panniers on and then adjusted the preload so it was how it would be when I was normally riding. So essential equipment to pack, puncture repair kit tire inflator, first aid kit, you never know and always prepare for the worst. If your bike's got a chain, chain lubricant, because the chances are you're going to be uh, riding for a long distance, you might want to give that chain a bit of TLC. A basic tool kit, just enough to get a few panels off and have a look at what's going on. If you have an off, like I did, uh, and you end up with a whole load of damaged plastics, then duct tape and tie wraps are always a good option to stick your bike back together and make it rideable till you can get it home. Um, so that's another essential. When it comes to clothes, um, I was going to Scotland, so you've got to be prepared for all weathers. So I did take, as well as my motorcycle gear, I took a jacket um, for wearing in the evenings and I took a full rain suit as well. They didn't take up a lot of room in the luggage. Um, also, you're riding all day, so you're in your bike gear most of the day. You only need a change of clothes for the evening. Then it's where do you put your luggage? So, obviously, I've tried to film a lot of this, so I, I had a lot of camera kit with me, and I put all of that in my top box along with my emergency tools. My train of thought was if your bike goes down and you're hurt and you need your first aid kit, if it's on the pannier, that's the ground side down, you're not going to be able to open it. So I put everything I wanted quick access to in my top box. Then in the side cases, I had one for the rain suit jacket shoes and the other one just for clothes. And it all fitted in with room to spare. Could easily um, have packed a whole load more in, but I didn't need a lot. So the panniers weren't full by any means. What you need to do as well is practice um, packing the panniers. There's no point on the morning trying to fit everything in. So you need to, before you set off, plan what you're going to take, pack it into the panniers, see how it works, take it all out, put it in again, see if there's anything you don't need. Plan a new route. So there's loads of tools out there. You can do it on Google. I used Kalimoto. Um, and what I did was I put uh, waypoints in for all the things I wanted to definitely see, including where I was staying at night. There was optional things um, where I programmed another route that included the optional things, but I had the key things I wanted to see and things I wasn't really that bothered about seeing, but I would go if I had time. And that way it takes a little bit of pressure off you because 
you only have to get to the places you really want to see and your digs for the night. If you put everything in, then you're putting yourself under pressure where you might be going to see something that you weren't really bothered about and then you've got time pressure on, on what you want to see later on. The least planning, apart from your night overnight stays, the better really, because then it's just a case of you riding and enjoying the ride. I think for my first time filming, it actually detracted from the, the ride a bit because I had GoPro problems. If you've watched the videos, you'll see the first one. I hardly had any audio or anything. Um, and they're constantly worrying, is the camera film and am I getting this? Is it working? And of course, that spoils your enjoyment of the ride. So it's a case of balancing how important is it to you to film the ride and how important is it to enjoy yourself. So if you are going to film it, you, like I say, take a bit of care in not focusing too much on the film and after all it's there for you to enjoy as well as to share with other people. Fuel. So one of the things that um, that happens is you can get fuel anxiety really easy and that definitely spoils your trip. When you're on familiar territory and you think you've got about 11 miles to go but your petrol tank is saying you've got 26 miles in the tank for some strange reason you start worrying am i going to get to where i need to be before i run out of fuel so if you've got half a tank and you see a fuel station i'd recommend you just pull in and fill up um, it's good to get off the bike stretch your legs maybe have a, a, a drink of something but it removes that fuel anxiety and then you enjoy your trip a lot better overnight stays you really want secure bike parking. You don't want the worry of is my bike safe on, on your mind while you're out in the evening or, or when you're trying to get to sleep at night. So you need to search for somewhere that's got good secure bike parking. So the journey home. You enjoy your time, you've had the excitement of seeing new places but I don't know about other people but I just found that once I started my journey home I just wanted to get home and although I went through Glencoe um, fantastic views, fantastic road. Once I was through there, yeah, I could have stopped off at Loch Lomond, done some uh, of the little roads around there, but it's just a case of, nah, I just want to get home and just blast home. And I even deviated from some of the twisty routes to get on to faster roads to, to make that journey shorter. Um, I don't know how you cope with that, but that's, that's what I found. So what did it cost? So there's only three factors, fuel, accommodation and food so I stayed in three well two B&B's and one hotel the hotel was a bit expensive but it was the only one that on the brochure of like on hotels.com said it had parking so that's what I used so would I rather have gone with a group it's a tough question I think I really enjoyed doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it that was a big plus but it would have been nice to have some company in the evenings um, so that's the only thing I mean you do bump into people and talk to them in the evenings that's a given really uh, especially if they've got a bike um, but everyone's willing to talk aren't they but uh, yeah a bit of company in the evenings would have been nice but I did actually really prefer the freedom of doing what I wanted when I wanted rather than having to keep a group together and agree what what everyone was going to do so yeah I, I think I preferred it on my own for my first trip so if you're thinking about taking your first trip why not just do it yeah I did um, my wife was worried I'll tell you that but I just thought I'm doing it I'm gonna do it so I booked everything up worked out what I was doing and, and off I went and you shouldn't be afraid of doing it it was fantastic it really was so uh, if you've got that inkling in your mind save the money or plan out what you're going to do and get out there and just do it yeah there's nothing stopping you really nothing at all so yeah that's my advice get out and do it uh, so if you found this useful if you're uh, thinking about your first tour then uh, and please give it a like, hit the subscribe button, you know, any, anything like that would help. Um, if it's helped you, then great. If not, I enjoyed the trip, I enjoyed making the videos. Uh, but that's it from me. So it's Gordon from Up North Biker. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and we'll catch you in the next one.